Hi and welcome to this demonstration series. My name is Jason Paul, I'm the Managing Director for Apt Innovations and today I'd like to show you how to drain down your own static caravan without the expense of having to pay someone to do it for you. So let's get started. So as a static caravan owner, we know that we need to carry out a drain down procedure at the end of the season. This is normally part of our winterizing. Now this would be a paid for procedure and we know of some people who have paid up to £120. Now what that basically means is that once we turn off the water going to the caravan, there still is water trapped inside your pipes. And we know from the last couple of very harsh winters that that water can freeze and obviously burst out. So we need to remove that water. Now normally this would be carried out by a site engineer who would use a commercial type compressor. Now what they would normally do is take uh, the nozzle and put it to each particular tap and blow the water back down through the system, what we would call the wrong way, um, so that that water comes out of the drain valves underneath. Now this can be a messy procedure as the site engineer would need to climb under the caravan to undo those drain valves. Now using that procedure, and it has been used for years, is quite an antiquated one. And I mean that by saying that caravans have changed over the years, um, such as it's not now possible to actually blow water from your hot water tap back in through your boiler and down through to those valves, so the boiler needs to be drained uh, separately. Also there are new bylaws in effect that mean that manufacturers have to install uh, non-return valves in behind showers. Um, what that does is it stops water from being sucked up from say a shower hose left in a little kneeling bath. Um, if someone else were to run a tap it's called back siphoning and that water would be drawn back up and pollute the water. So it's not possible to use a compressor to blow that water back down through the shower. So what you'll normally find is the site engineer has to remove the actual shower block itself and set that on the floor in the shower. What I would like to do is to introduce you to our own new product called Flow. Now what we propose is instead of trying to blow water down as we say the wrong way, what we'd like to do is get access to the cold water system, use compressed air again and blow water out as we would call it the right way. And it's by using this little device. Now, Flow has at one end of it a threaded connector. Now what that can do is it will fit um, to any outside tap um, and at the other end of the device is a valve. And what we're proposing here that you can use something like a foot pump or a little 12 volt tire compressor that you may have that plugs into the cigarette lighter of your car. Now as I said the outside tap um, is usually a great place to, to carry out this procedure. Now if you don't have an outside tap it's not a problem um, because what you can use is this little device here. It's called a compression fit T. Now you would recognize it because it's the sort of thing that's used to connect up your washing machine or your dishwasher. Not a lot of people know this that the actual threads for you to connect on your washing machine hoses is exactly the same as an outside tap so Flo can connect onto that. Now what we would suggest is that you would fit this somewhere on the cold water line probably in one of the horizontal pipes that run underneath the caravan and you can get access to those up the side pretty much underneath where the kitchen is but for now what we have here is an outside tap which is an ideal place for this demonstration now while we're on the subject of outside taps, I'd just like to show you this one here. Bylaws now dictate as well that all new taps to be fitted must have non-return valves also installed into them. Now, you will know this because if you feel underneath the tap itself, you will see a little nut, okay? That would tell you that it has a non-return valve fitted. Now, this unfortunately cannot be used um, with flow up, except if you were to remove the tap, there is a little silver circlip and a little white plug inside the tap. Now with a very sharp point of a knife what you can do is actually remove the circlip and in fact also remove that little white plug okay and that will make that tap fully usable. Okay so the next thing we want to do is to turn the water off at the stopcock and as you can see here we've moved the stopcock over to the edge of the decking and that just makes it much easier to get access to. So now that we've turned the water off the stopcock, that should actually kill the water supply coming to this particular tap, although there will still be water uh, in behind this tap. So what we'd like to do, so that we don't run water down into our compressor, is just run that tap. So now that that tap is drained, what we can do now is fit our flow device onto it. Now, what you will get in the pack is this 
uh, is flow attached to this green card. Inside the green card you'll see all of your instructions. Please do read these very carefully uh, and they will explain obviously how to carry out the procedure. So on flow itself what we have is this threaded tap connector. So by removing that you will notice also that there is a little green nut in here. This is a half inch connection which will fit a lot of your plumbing uh, connections within the property but this grey connector has a three quarter inch fitting and what we can do is just screw that onto our outside top, just a typical garden hose connector. Okay, so making sure that that's nice and firmly fit, okay, what we can do is then connect on our device. At the opposite end of flow, you will see we have a valve, so we'll just take off the dust cap. So now that we're ready to connect, just snap it on and nice firm fit. Now, just lift that out of the way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, compressed air and push that air through the tap into the cold water system. Now, what that compressed air will do is it will act as sort of like a coil spring. Um, so, the, so any space that's in there, and as I say, whenever you drain that tap, um, what that did was create a little bit of space in that pipework system. What we'll do, push air into it, and compress the air and when we release a tap inside what will happen is the, the, the water will be pushed out of the water system and followed by the air. It's as if it's being chased out of, out of the tap. So the next thing I'd like to discuss is how to get air into the system. Now we're not suggesting that you have to go and buy a large commercial compressor, um, but because we use a valve at the bottom here, this is a typical car type valve or a bicycle valve and there are lots of ways that we can get air into uh, our water system. Now, first of all, what we have is a typical bicycle pump, Okay, as long as it has a dial uh, on the back there so that you can gauge how much uh, air you're putting in. Um, what we also have is this handheld device. Um, if I press the trigger, it will provide air. Um, you can also use a 12 volt compressor that uh, you can buy in most garages or, or auto parts stores um, and they work very well as well. Just plug them into the cigarette lighter of the car. I use this one here. Um, this is a battery type compressor. As you can see it has jump leads on the side and it's just a handy thing to have about. Um, but one of the things that it does have is a digital compressor on the back. Um, so what we can do is just undo the back flap and as you can see there's a, a tire inflator. And it means on this particular compressor what I can do is I can set the pressure um, and then the compressor will, uh, once it reaches that pressure, it will stop. So what we'll do is just just get it connected. So just fit that onto the end. And that's it, we're ready to um, build the pressure up inside the system for the first time. Just make sure that inside you have turned all of your taps to the off position um, because it's, this is somewhat like putting air into a balloon and if there's a leak that air will escape. So make sure you've turned all of your taps off. Okay, so what we can do is just set our compressor to 30 PSI and switch it on. And that's it, it's reached 30 PSI so we can go and we can drain down our first tap. So now that the compressor has made its way to 30 PSI, we're ready to drain down our first tap. Now the first tap we're going to uh, empty is our cold tap. Now it doesn't really matter which one you do but starting with the cold. Now this should work. If the cold tap doesn't work you may have a, a problem with your uh, compressor. Just make sure that all of your seals are tight enough. It may also mean that your tap has a non-return type valve in there so you may wish to check for it. Um, if it doesn't happen to work what you could actually do is open this particular first tap and then go out and redo your compressor um, and when you watch this tap once you uh, start your compressor it should actually start to to push that water out um, if it doesn't take a look at our support section on the website to pick up some uh, hints and tips in there so now that we've built up the pressure let's empty the first tap now what i would suggest is that you carry a little rag because what will happen is the water will be pushed out and chased out out, if you will and pushed out by the air so you'll get the water and then a large spit of air and it just basically stops the water from splashing around so just by covering that over and empty the first tap And that's it, that's the first tap drained out, so we'll let the compressor start up again, get to 30 psi once more, and then we'll do the hot tap. 
So now that we're in the bathroom, this is where flow really comes into its own. Historically, if you were to pay a site engineer to come and drain down your caravan, what they would have done is probably removed this shower block and left it on the floor. That's because there are non-return valves in behind there. Now what that meant was that uh, if a shower head had been left lying in, let's say, um, a little kneeling bath of water, potentially if another tap in the caravan was run, that would suck up the water uh, and pollute into the water system. So it's not a bylaw to have those uh, particular non-return valves installed. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to push that water out then following the natural flow of water. Um, so the first thing we need to do is first of all to drain the hot tap is we want to turn our shower block all the way to hot. Lift our shower head down so that it's easier to push out the water and then turn on your water supply. And as you can see, there's quite an amount of water there. Okay, so that's the hot line now drained. The next thing we want to do is turn the shower block all the way to cold uh, and do the same thing after the compressor has built back up to 30 psi. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to drain the hot and the cold taps in, in the bathroom. So by again I would suggest that you get a cloth just to cover it because there will be that spit of air coming out after the water as you can see. <coughs> and now once again it's charged up to 30 so we'll just do the hot side again using our rag. And that's it, we'll move on to the toilets. Something that's commonly forgotten is to drain the toilet. Now you have got a water inlet coming into the toilet and that will have water trapped in there as well. So we want to drain that um, and we will do this at the very end of the procedure. Um, so what you would do is just lift the lid off the cistern. Uh, you can see the ball cock here that I have in my hand and just push that in the down position. You'll hear the water coming through. And that's it, any water that was trapped in that lines has now been removed. So now that you've carried out the drain down, it's important as a little checklist you make sure that you've drained down the hot and the cold uh, in the kitchen taps. Any dishwashers or washing machines that you have, basically disconnect them and open the little uh, drain valve where the hose of the washing machine connects to the compression fit tap that we discussed earlier. Um, also that you've drained down the hot and the cold in the wash hand basin in the bathroom. The hot, turn all the way to hot and all the way to cold for your shower and indeed don't forget your toilets um, just push the ball cock down um, to make sure that it's drained also. One other thing you may wish to check is the drain valves underneath the caravan. Now these are specifically designed for draining as they're at the lowest point. Now there really shouldn't be an awful lot of water in there if any um, but just as a first time out you might want to check to say charge up the compressor one last time and just to check that if this is something uh, you need to consider when doing your drain down. As we have discussed with the water travelling um, out of the hot tap, you'll find that it has uh, drained your boiler or your geyser also, but as I say, check with your manufacturer just to make sure there are no other little drain valves um, that you need to release to do that as well. It brings me on to another very important point. As we have been carrying out the drain down, we've been opening a tap, releasing the water from it and closing it again. So all of your taps and fittings will be turned off at this point. It's absolutely imperative that you turn all of those taps back on again. Any water that one or two percent that was in the lines with your tap switched on, that has the potential to freeze. And if your taps are turned off, that would burst out of your pipes. Now there really shouldn't be an awful lot of water in there. But if you keep all of your taps open, um, including the shower, what you would do is bring the um, hot and cold mixer to the middle. It means that uh, air can actually get into those pipes. Any water that could potentially freeze will actually creep up the lines uh, and not burst out of them. Also, what you want to do is flush your toilets. By flushing them, the most of the water will come out of the cistern. Now, they won't refill again because you've got your water turned off. Uh, and as a final, I would also put uh, down a half a cup of antifreeze down into the toilet cistern, another down into the toilet bowl, and any other uh, plug holes around the caravan, such as your sinks, your showers, uh, and your kitchen, wash hand basins, etc. 
And that's it, that's the drain down carried out, um, that should keep you going to the next season. And of course one of the benefits of using flow is that if you do wish to have a weekend through the winter months, um, you can introduce water to the uh, system and of course just carry out a quick drain down before you go. One piece of advice I would give to you though is that any external pipes please make sure that they have been lagged with uh, foam lagging just in case it is a particularly cold snap and um, we wouldn't want any water freezing in those pipes. So if there's any other advice that you need um, please remember to go to the website and to the support section where you'll be able to get plenty of hints and uh, tips. Uh, and that's it so I'd like to thank you for watching.